Hi, mystery readers. I'm Alexandra Amore. This is It's a Mystery Podcast, and I'm here today with Renee Polish. Hi, Renee. Hi, how are you? Very well. How are you? Doing just great. Good. And I should say we're here with Renee and Harley, who's there in the background. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, I want to say to you, oh, that's the end of that. <laughs> I want to say to you, I just want to explain to everybody, I've got a bit of a cold. So I've got a lozenge in. If I sound a little weird, that's what's going on there. So let me introduce our listeners to you. Uh, Renee Polish is the award-winning author of the best-selling Reed Ferguson mystery series and other mysteries and stories. Critics have said that Renee is a promising new voice in the comic murder mystery genre and a powerful storyteller. Her book, and I might pronounce, mispronounce this, Nephilim Genesis of Evil, is that right? It's Nephilim. Nephilim. Nephilim Genesis of Evil has been compared to Stephen King and Frank Peretti. Renee was born in California, but has lived most of her life in Colorado. So I'm really excited to have you here today, Renee, to talk about your Reed Ferguson mysteries. Yeah. And the thing that really attracted them to me is they're, they're um, in that sort of comic noir genre. And I'm a huge Robert B. Parker fan. Um, okay. He's not with us any longer, of course, but I wondered... Was there a particular author like um, Raymond Chandler or, or somebody who inspired you? Um, yeah, kind, kind of a lot of the classic authors. Um, yeah, actually, I wrote the first book in the series, um, This Doesn't Happen in the Movies, uh, like 14 years ago. And I had been reading a lot of, like, I, I was influenced by, like, Sue Grafton. I've met her a number of times back when she was just getting going. And another one was a local author here named um, John Dunning, who wrote the book To Die, you know, the, the Bookman series, I guess they call it. And um, I just, I was trying to come up with a detective that was, you know, a little bit funny, a little bit of a smart ass. Um, and, and Reed was sort of born out of that, and, and part of that was trying to go, okay, why would this guy want to be a detective? And Because when I wrote the first novel, nobody had done stories where it was the detective's very first case. It might be the very first case you were reading about, but it wasn't their first case. And so I was trying to make it different, and then with that it was, well, what would make him want to become a detective so bad? And that was kind of the whole liking Humphrey Bogart and film noir and stuff like that. And, and then as I've written the books, I've read more of the classics like Chandler and, and uh, James M. Cain and, and people like that. Oh, okay. So you were kind of looking for a unique way to tell a story um, and weren't necessarily um, wanting specifically to write in this genre. Is that... Would you say well, not, not necessarily in, in noir, not mm -hmm. at first. Um, yeah. It, it kind of came out of seeing the reception for the first book. And, and really, the funny thing is, is that it's, it's almost like, in a way, created a new genre. Or maybe there's a few of us out there. Because you, you think of noir as a very dark type of book or story. And, and mine and Parker and I guess some of those, there's definitely the comedic elements in it. And I almost wish Amazon would create a comedic noir category, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, there definitely is the noir elements to the story, but at least with Reed Ferguson, he's he's a bit of a smart aleck, too, you know, I mean, he's definitely got a sense of humor. <laughs> yes, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about him. I noticed in one description, um, I think it was you that had described him as that he had a lot of flaws. Um, you know, he's far from perfect. I think that was the phrase that you used. So, so what's going on with him? Yeah, he's, the, the thing is, is he almost in some ways has stumbled into the detecting business. I mean, he, he wanted to do it, but he really had no skills. He, he wasn't a cop or anything. The, the best he had going for him was he was pre-law in college. Um, and so sometimes he's accused of being a bumbling hero. I, I personally don't see him that way. I see him as more of a real character who things don't always go as, as you plan. And sometimes you get caught in situations where, um, you know, you're thinking on your feet and, you know, like, like in one story, he ends up in a dumpster. And I had most people, I think, can see the comedic elements and think that's funny. You know, I had one reviewer was like, oh, I just quit reading at that point. But... I just thought it was funny, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
to the sky trying to sneak around an alley and suddenly the bad guys are there and the first thing you can think of to do is dive in the dumpster and hide. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and so I think there's parts of like the, the Columbo to him, but a lot of people have said they sort of feel like it's, if you could picture Remington Steele, um, you know, some of those older TV shows they see read in that. Um, so he's, yeah, he's, he's just kind of an everyday guy who, trying to do a good job and you know loves his girlfriend or now in the series she's she's become his wife and mm. he's, he's up but he gets the job done <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah exactly and i was going to ask you about that because i noticed we were speaking just before we came online that the the 13th book was released today which is today's may 10th uh, 2016 and i noticed it just it mentioned his wife in the book and so i thought wow over 13 books he's he's probably gone on quite a journey with you. And what's that been like for you? It's interesting because they become real in a sense, mm -hmm. the characters do. And so, yeah, he's, he's become almost a, you know, another family member or something like that. And he's gone from, you know, liking this girl who lived across the street to dating her to now they got married. And there's, uh, a series of other characters, the Goofball Brothers, that are these two guys that, that um, let's just say the elevator doesn't reach the top floor, <laughs> you know, but they're very loyal friends, and then he's got a computer nerd best friend, and there's a couple of other characters, uh, um, his mother, you know, who's just always beside herself because he's the detective, and, you know, he's going to get hurt, or he's going to do drugs, or, you know, this kind of thing, you know, kind of always treating him like he's, you know, 15, and and the funny thing is, is now my reviews, if you read them of the latest series, people are like, you know, all the gang's back, you know, and they just sort of expect everybody to be there. So, um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, they are, they do almost become like family. Yes, yeah, for sure. And I know as a mystery reader myself, when someone has a series the length of yours and there are recurring characters, I do get just as attached to the to the side yeah. characters as to the main character. Yeah, right, right. I do too, and and mm -hmm. uh, I'm a long time mystery series fan. Yeah, and you like to see the progression of the characters, and and I think if they don't progress realistically, then you let your readers down too. Because I've had times where people have felt I think like Reed should be just shooting people, you know, running around with his gun all the time, and I'm like, that's not his character. And he he even references at times that he's sort of like uh, James Garner in, in the old um, uh, oh, Rockford Files series. And his comment in the series is always he doesn't carry a gun because he doesn't want to have to use it. And mm -hmm. that's pretty neat. You know, he'll carry a gun, but he really doesn't. He doesn't want to shoot anybody. You know? Yeah. So if he suddenly blew somebody away now, it wouldn't fit with his character. You know, it has to progress to that point. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and one of the thing I, things I know about some other noir characters, and I wondered if this was true for Reed, is that they could be kind of hard-boiled on the outside, but smart alethy, like you've said Reed is. But then Spencer, for example, Robert B. Parker's character, was very much a philosopher underneath, um, liked poetry, liked to cook, was very introspective. Um, does Reed have those two sides to him, or...? Um, he, he's not real hard boiled, okay. but, um, he does have, there's times where some of that flashes out and then he'll think back on it and, you know, almost surprised at himself or something like that. But he, and he is growing more into that, um, as, as the series goes on. Um, his is more, um, you, you know, it's kind of funny because sometimes it's like, he's just a good guy. And I think a piece of what I tried to do with the series as well is, is for me, so many so many people create characters, at least within the mystery realm, where there's got to be some kind of major flaw with the character, like he's an alcoholic, or you know, he's divorced, or this or that or the other. And I kind of wanted to go against stereotype and go, mm -hmm. let's just have a guy who's a good guy, and he wants to stay with his wife, and he likes to have a good time, you know, and treat people well and whatever. He just happens to be a detective as well. So he doesn't have that. I've got another series that is more hard-boiled. The detective is hard-boiled, and, and you know, it's a historical mystery series, so it takes place in the late 40s, and he does reference World War II, and he's not afraid to B 
beat people up or use a gun or something. So Yeah, oh, okay. Not that back there, Harley back there. Yes, yeah, exactly. Not paying attention to us, though, I see. Yeah, <laughs> it started to rain, so he was oh. paying attention to that. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so tell us a little bit, too, then, about this other series. So set in 1940, so historical, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's the Dewey Webb mystery series, and there's there's one out, and I'm just wrapping up the second one now to take to the editor. And so he is a, um, a private detective, uh, World War II vet. Um, he is married with a young child, and it's kind of interesting because I really didn't necessarily want to have him married, but I actually created the character in one of the Reed Ferguson mysteries backstory and that is a present day um, past tense novel. So the, the novel is Reed try, is approached by a guy who says, my grandfather was this detective and I need you to find out some stuff about him. And the story switches back and forth between now and 1955. Oh. And so I decided then to branch off and write this series, but I had made that character have a wife and a little kid at that point, and it was kind of necessary for the backstory, but now I was like, okay, well, he has to have the kid. I can't change all of that. <laughs> right. You know, so he's kind of, he is hard-boiled, and yet the, the challenge for him is to try and figure out how to not let some of that toughness and hardness that he has spill over into his marriage and with his newborn son, so... Mm -hmm. And do you have uh, plans to extend that series, like to write more? You've got the second one, and then more after that. I'd like to. I mean, honestly, some of it depends on on sales. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to put a lot into a series if it's not selling. Um, and this this one does okay. It doesn't do as good as the Reed Ferguson series, but I also think it, it might just be a matter of a little bit of discoverability. If I could get a few in the series, I'd like to see about like if BookBub would would take in and then that might get more eyes on the books and and then if, if it does well i could easily see six or eight in the series at least yes yeah um and getting back to reed so i mean it, it fascinates me that over the course of 13 books you've spent quite a bit of time with them yeah and you said you started writing the first one 14 years ago i think yeah yeah and so has it been a challenge to to find new adventures for him over that course of that time or well, no, and, and most of it has been written lately, because what actually happened is I wrote the first one, I think, in about 2001 or 2002, and it kind of sat there, and I did I wrote Nephilim, and I self-published that, and this was before Amazon and the Kindle and all that, and then it was in 2011 that I turned around and started self-publishing, and so for, I'd written book two. Um, so book three and beyond has all been written in the last few years. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at first it was hard coming up with stories, not so much anymore. And I think some of that has to do with the pace I've been able to keep up. Um, I, it just, I think like any muscle, writing becomes easier the more you do it. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, some of it has been too, because he loves film noir so much. And if you read the stories, there's always... A, uh, a movie or two that come into play, which is some of the play on words in the titles. They, they all have a reference either to a movie or some kind of a uh, film um, word in them or, or reference in them, you know, so like real estate ripoff, you know, is R-E-E-L, you know, for a film reel and that kind of thing. Yeah. So somewhere where I get my ideas is I, as I go through and read about some of the old... Um, film noir movies that are out there and then kind of spin off from there and go, oh, Reed could do X, Y, or Z, and, and, and then it suddenly becomes a story. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, yeah. And he, he's a Denver resident, correct? Yes. Yeah, which is, and you're a Colorado as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, from and, that standpoint, write what you know, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. And yeah. I, I love when, uh, like, getting back to Robert and Parker and Spencer, um, Boston is kind of a character, very much a character in his books. Um, my books are set on, in British Columbia, and again, the area that they're set in becomes a character. Do you find that with Denver, or is it just kind of in the background? Uh, no, I think I think in some ways it does become a character. And I try to be careful of not to get, you know, too detailed, 
but definitely try to give people enough. And, and I think it's working because I do get compliments on, I can kind of picture the area having not been to Denver or that kind of thing. But I, I think it's nice to give a flavor of the area as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, exactly. I've never been to Denver, but I'd love to see it. Uh, yeah, I've not been to British Columbia, but it's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, and so I guess what else did I want to ask? Um, you've written, you you write young adult novels as well, right. and you've written a, a nonfiction story about a haunted house, I think, which, Correct. yeah, is fascinating to me. Um, do you feel like mystery is kind of the main genre that you're drawn to now? Yeah, it's what I grew up reading. I, I was a voracious reader, um, a, a tomboy, and so I liked the Hardy Boys and um, you know, not, not so much Nancy Drew, read a few of those, but I just read a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and, and honestly, I think some of it, if you read enough, there's some intuitive pieces that you pick up, I think, in terms of story and pacing and, and stuff like that. And I've read, you know, Sue Grafton and I've, I've read a lot of the, the Spencer novels, um, read, uh, you know, Dennis Lehane, Michael Connelly, Robert Hayes, you know, just so many of them. And, and actually a long time ago when authors would tour more, I've met quite a number of them and talked with them here and there about the craft of writing and, and, and that kind of thing. And um, so it, it is the most natural fit for me. Um, I, I've enjoyed writing some other things, um, but it's certainly the easiest for me and, and the most natural fit. Right. You said you met, uh, earlier you said you met Sue Grafton uh, several times. Yeah. Um, were you able to talk to her about writing at all? I did. When, the first time I met her, she was touring for probably F is for Fugitive. This, this was probably the, um, what, like the early 90s or late 80s. I was, um, you know, in college. I'm dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> She came to a little bookstore that's not here anymore, but it was called Murder by the Book. And, um, you know, they, they, it was in a little house, and so it was able to just kind of sit down with her, and nobody was there. And we just kind of chatted, you know, and people would come in, and she'd sign something. But she'd talk about, you know, um, how she wrote her first novel, you know. And I think it's kind of well known now, but, that you know, she was in the middle of a bad divorce, I think it was you know, plotting ways to kill her ex-husband, you know, <laughs> yes, but yeah. she was sharing that, you know, and, and we just kind of chatted about that kind of stuff, so it was really neat to have somebody kind of go, you can do it, and just keep pushing, and that kind of thing. Wow, so she was really encouraging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's uh, she's very nice, I've, I've seen her, you know, a number of other times, not always where I got to really chat with her, but she's mm -hmm. always been very personable. Oh, that's lovely, that's always so nice to hear when you have uh when you're fans with somebody that they turn out to be kind of nice yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she must be i read her books the alphabet series early on but i ha I stopped a while ago she must be getting close to to z by now or z as you say yeah i i think x is the one that's come out and and you know interestingly enough i'm i'm i read them more because i want to find out what happens to Kinsey and Henry and some of them versus, I think a long time ago she sort of lost sight of how to write a good mystery. I'm probably going to make some people mad, but, <laughs> you know, I just, I don't know that the mysteries are as compelling as they once were, um, and, yeah. and I've always said to myself when my readers start saying, you know, read isn't fun anymore or whatever, then that's when to kill the series, and unfortunately for her, I think whether she's liked it or not, she kind of does feel like she has to finish the alphabet. <laughs> exactly, right? She kind of, yeah, she kind of, it's a bit of a golden handcuff situation there when you start off with A is for alibi. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I, I wonder if she'll write anything else actually afterwards. <clears throat> I've heard, and it's, it's, you know, this person heard this type of a thing, but I've heard her say, or that she's been quoted as saying, when she reaches Z, she's done, because she's already, I think, in her early 70s. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I think she's kind of like, I'm retiring at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I wonder if she does it, right? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, no kidding. 
Well, this has been great, Renee. Thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been great talking to you and Harley. Harley, he's been pretty quiet, but. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you let everyone know where they can find your books? Sure. It's, my Whoops. website is uh, ReneePolish.com. Um, and then right now they're on Amazon. Um, I'm exclusive with them, but you can always get an app to read Amazon, you know, read Kindle books on, on other devices. So Right. Yes. <laughs> And then you also have a promotion you wanted to tell us about. Right. Um, I'm doing tr trying to do this once a month now, and the first one will be this weekend. But I've just got a bunch of authors together, and we are discounting our books to 99 cents. And so people can go to ReneePolish.com forward slash promo, and they can find the books this weekend that are on discount. And there's no signing up for email lists or anything like that. They can just peruse the book, click on it, and it takes them right to Amazon, and they can shop. Oh, wow, fantastic. What a great idea. Yeah, I actually got it from somebody else who does a science fiction fantasy one, so okay. I thought, well, the mysteries and thrillers need one, too. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'll put a note, I'll put a mention of that in the show notes um, with a link to that page. And um, you said the promotion is different every month. Right. right, I think they'll, they'll either be 99 cents or free books or maybe 99 cent box sets, but it would never, I don't anticipate it being anything other than that. Okay, and so then, and so the other thing is that the, the stock sort of changes every once yes. in a while? Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, that's... Yeah, try not to feature the same books twice or rotate them through, you know, at least let a number of months go by before the same book is featured again. Yeah. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for that. My readers, or my, our listeners hopefully will appreciate that. Great. That's great. great. So thank you again. Take care. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Bye-bye.